Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Very often, the account of Jesus at the wedding feast in Cana is used as an example of the very high place that Jesus gives to the sanctity of marriage. It's also used to show how he often gives so much more than we sinners either desire or truly even deserve. And yes, Jesus does honor marriage. After all, he is the one who instituted it, who sanctifies it. And while it is also true that Jesus gives to all his creation, both the evil and the good, so much more than they deserve. After all, he gives us life and salvation when the only thing we really deserve is death and damnation. Well, St. John tells us that this story is for a different purpose. St. John writes that what happened that day was for one purpose and one purpose alone. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. That is to say that the wedding at Cana is one of those moments when Jesus gives us a sign that reveals him as our salvation. St. John tells us this, the first of his signs Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. But John doesn't speak of signs as we might think of them with our modern ear. Often when we think of signs, we think of them as symbols something that symbolically stands in the place of something else. But for St. John, that's, that's not the case. For St. John, this word sign really means something that points to or is somehow linked with something else. Quite literally, the Greek word that St. John uses that we translate very often as sign, means mystery. Now in the same way, mystery in Latin is translated as sacrament. A sacrament is a mystery. And a mystery is a sign that points to something or reveals something that is hidden from ordinary sight. And so these signs in Holy Scripture reveal something that you wouldn't otherwise know or even recognize unless someone or something has revealed it to you. You know, a sign's a little bit like a, a gift that's waiting to be opened. Martin Luther tells us that God gives signs as something visible for our faith to hold on to. And so it is that the Lord's holy gifts of baptism and his supper manifested in lowly water, simple bread and wine, are signs, are mysteries, are sacraments. They point to Jesus because they are inextricably linked to Jesus. They are signs of Christ Jesus real bodily presence among us as creator and redeemer. And in these signs, we experience the death that Jesus died, that death which gives us life. But I don't want you to misunderstand I'm not saying that every time Jesus performs a miracle that we have a, a new sacrament. 
But what I'm saying is that Jesus' miracles are sacramental in nature. They are sacramental signs that point to him, that reveal him as the Son of God. These signs point to spiritual truth of the Christ, of the Messiah, the anointed one who took on our flesh, who lived among us and experienced everything that we experience. They reveal Jesus, who while fully human and like us in every way, except without sin, is also fully, truly God. These miracles, the first of which he brought forth this day, they are signs, visible, sacramental manifestations that reveal Jesus for who he really is. The Word made flesh. The one who created all things and who upholds all things in himself. They reveal the glory of the one and only Son of God, Christ Jesus. And this is how Jesus has chosen to reveal himself to you and to come to you in signs in which his word resides. But there's a problem. The problem's not with the sign, the mystery, the sacrament. The problem is that these aren't the signs that we would choose for ourselves. It's no surprise for me to tell you that we are an evil and adulterous generation. We seek after all kinds of signs, just not the signs that Jesus has given to us. And so often we then seek Jesus elsewhere in heartfelt emotion that lifts us up to heaven so we can feel his presence. While the truth is that we despise his presence in the water, in the word, in the bread, in the wine. We pray for signs from God instead of relying on the signs that he has already provided. Might it be that we're afraid that Jesus will not do what he's promised unless we can see or experience some sort of miraculous sign? Now because of that fear, because we seemingly can't find comfort in what Jesus has already given. We turn back to the law. We seek him there. But the law is empty. The law cannot save. Its purpose is to accuse and to kill. Now we have drunk this inferior wine to the dregs. And yet we are not satisfied. The jars are empty and all that we find is pain, despair, sickness, death. But Jesus came to fulfill the law. Just as there were six jars to be filled... So Jesus, on the sixth day of the week, fulfilled all the law and the prophets. Just as man was created on the sixth day, so the Creator now recreates His creation on the sixth day with His holy body and His most precious blood. On the sixth day, Jesus died on His cross and was placed in His grave. It is finished. His hour had come. But that's not the end of the story. The one who has died no longer is dead. He lives. That new and greater Jonah, after spending three days in the belly of the earth, now gives us his greatest sign, the empty grave. He is not there. Jesus 
lives. He has filled the law to the brim, and our cup runneth over. He replaces the law and the old covenant with a new and better wine. We are not purified by the law, but by his blood. The risen Christ is the beginning of the new order of things. In him, through him, creation is renewed and revitalized. And although this renewal is perceived now only by faith, we see signs of it in the miracles, in the sacraments that Jesus has given to us. And Jesus continues to provide, as he does even this day, Signs that point to him. He has provided to you mysteries in the holy sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper. There Jesus is hidden in lowly water and simple bread and wine. But in these miracles, he is revealed to you. In these sacraments, Jesus, who revealed at Cana that he is Lord of the elements, continues now to reveal himself as the Lord of all creation. And in the waters of holy baptism, Jesus makes you his own. It is not the waters of baptism that are, are more noble than any other water. In fact, they are plain water except that the word and the command of Jesus now rest inextricably linked with it. And as he turned the water into wine, with his word and by his command, he also gave water the power to redeem you. For it is written, baptism now saves you. Baptism is a washing of regeneration. Baptism is a recreation of that which was dead in sin. Baptism recreates you in the newness of life in Christ Jesus. And in the same manner, the Lord's Supper is a sign of your redemption in Jesus Christ. Is it not written, that the blood of Jesus cleanses you from sin. The miracle of Jesus' true body and most precious blood under the elements of bread and wine reveals the mystery of your salvation in a blessed and holy sacramental union with Christ himself. It is as though Jesus takes you as his bride, and you who were two are now one flesh. Now on that day at the wedding celebration in Cana, our Lord revealed who he is. He revealed himself to us and to the whole world. In this, the first of his signs, Jesus points us to the restoration of creation that he would accomplish on that greater third day, Easter Sunday, and through his first miracle, indeed through all his miracles, Jesus manifest his glory and revealed to us a foretaste of what was to come, the restoration of our life in God as it was meant to be. Jesus has given you a sign at Cana, at Calvary, in the font, at the altar. Jesus gives you a sign of his glory. And his glory revealed is also a sign. A sign of his love for you. At Cana, in the font, on the altar, our Lord has given us signs of his renewed creation, one for us on the cross at Calvary. And these signs, these signs are renewed here every Lord's Day. Every Sunday in this nave is a sign, a mystery, a sacrament revealing the glory of Jesus Christ. 
Here, Jesus reveals that his life and his death are yours. Every Sunday, Jesus reveals that his body was given for you. His blood was shed for you for the remission of your sins. Jesus reveals to you his glory, the glory of his death for your righteousness. And the divine service, well, that is his wedding feast given for you. He is the groom, the wine steward, and the wine. And you, dear brothers and sisters, are the bride and the honored guest. Alleluia. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.